Hooray! Art with us. Did you know that Cupid has a surprise in store for the audience in Primavera? I hope you're ready for some love at first sight. Enter the enchanting world of Sandro Botticelli's Primavera. A painting that has captivated the hearts and minds of viewers and scholars for centuries. This masterpiece is a stunning tribute to the beauty of spring, rich with mystery and symbolism that continues to fascinate and intrigue. Among the most celebrated allegories of the season in the history of art, Primavera is a masterpiece that invites us to explore its hidden depths and marvel at its exquisite beauty. So let's step into the orange grove of Sandro Botticelli's Primavera, where nine mythical figures are brought to life amidst a riot of blooming flowers and verdant greenery. The painting is a testament to Botticelli's literary influences, drawing inspiration from the likes of Ovid and Lucretius. The rich with symbolism, Primavera is not based on any one specific tale, leaving its mysteries to be pondered and interpreted by viewers for centuries to come. Primavera is now a jewel in the collection of the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, and it remains full of fascinating surprises. In this video, we will explore four things that you may not know about this enigmatic marvel. My name is Pavla, and welcome to my channel. If you're new, check out our channel by clicking our name below the video. If you like our content, subscribe and turn on notifications. Join me, an artist passionate about sharing knowledge. Today, we have a special guest joining us. It's my husband, Peter. Let's discover, laugh, and learn together. And to add a bit of spice, stick around until the end for some slightly controversial Primavera jokes. First fascinating mystery surrounding Sandro Botticelli's masterpiece, Primavera. Despite its timeless allure, little is known about the painting's origin or purpose. Scholars speculate that the painting was created in the 1470s or early 1480s. But the exact date remains a mystery. Equally enigmatic is why Botticelli painted it. Some art historians propose that the Medici family commissioned the painting as a wedding gift for Lorenzo di Pier Francesco de Medici and Semiramide Abiano in 1482. As the wedding was originally scheduled for May, spring was an appropriate theme. Secondly, the painting's name was given to it by Giorgio Vasari. Although it is now known as Primavera, Botticelli did not give it this name. Vasari, who was a famed art historian, saw the painting over 70 years after it was created and decided to call it spring. Thirdly, Primavera is intended to be read from right to left. The painting measures 80 by 124 inches, and much of the conversation around it has rightfully centered on distinguishing and identifying the mythological figures depicted in the scenes. The generally accepted reading of the painting is as follows. Zephyrus, the cold wind of March, is on the right, clasping the nymph Chloris, whom he will kidnap. Zephyrus will later marry Chloris, who will be trans transformed into Flora, the goddess of spring. Botticelli has signaled this transformation by overlapping the figure of Chloris and that of Flora, who appears as the third figure from the right, elegantly scattering flowers. At roughly the center and slightly to the back of the composition is a figure widely agreed to be Venus, in a dress of gray blue and a red shawl. Above Venus is her companion, Cupid, blindfolded, with his arrow aimed. Three graces appear next in diaphanous, transparent white dresses and at the far left appears the god Mercury. Many have interpreted the sequence of these mythological figures to suggest the progression of the season, with Zephyrus of March, followed by Venus, the goddess of April, and Mercury, the god of May, raising his caduceus towards wisps of clouds to disband the final bursts of cold as summer prepares to take the stage. Finally, Primavera embraces compositional approaches from earlier Gothic styles, rather than the mastery of perspective and space exalted in artworks of the Renaissance era. A whopping 500 plant species are said to have been depicted in the painting, with nearly 200 different flowers, of course, symbolizing different meanings and messages. The central figures in the painting, the three graces, represent beauty, charm, and joy, while the woman in the center, likely the Roman goddess Venus, symbolizes love and fertility. The figures on the left side of the painting are associated with spring and fertility, while those on the right symbolize autumn and the harvest. Many art historians consider Primavera to be an allegory of love, with Venus at the center representing both physical and spiritual love. The painting's complex symbolism and use of mythological figures have also led some scholars to interpret it as a representation of the Neoplatonic philosophy, which emphasizes the interconnectedness of all things in the universe. Today, Primavera remains one of Botticelli's most famous and iconic works, and it continues to inspire artists and art enthusiasts alike. The painting has been the subject of countless reproductions, imitations, and reinterpretations, and it remains a beloved and enduring example of Renaissance art. Why did the three graces always hang out together in Primavera? Because, because they, they didn't, didn't want, want to be, to be caught, caught with an, an odd, odd number, number of friends. friends. Why did the Renaissance painter have trouble creating the perfect Primavera painting? Because, because he, he couldn't, couldn't get, get a good date for Flora. Flora. What did Mercury say when he saw the flowers in Primavera? This, this painting, painting is, is blossoming with beauty. Before we go, I have a question for you. Did you enjoy having my husband Peter as a special guest in today's video? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Take care with love. And check out the full Renaissance playlist in the description below.